Uh, so let's look at the multiplicative group for Zn modulo n. So I'll give you a, a bit of a background behind the symbol here, which you often see in, in cryptography. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll actually see how it's used. OK, so here's, here's a little puzzle for you. So for the numbers up to 10, which numbers do not share uh, the factors, any factors with 10? So 10 is equal to 2 times 5. So those are the two uh, factors. Any number apart from the prime is made up from a multiplication of prime numbers. So we'll often take the factors uh, that, we, that we have and break them down into uh, this multiplication. So if we try 1, of course, 1 is OK. Uh, 2 doesn't work. 3, that works. 4 is 2 times 2, so that doesn't work. 5 doesn't work because we have 5 here. 6 doesn't work because it's 2 times 3. 7, that works. 8, nope. 9, that works. So we have 1, 3, 7 and 9. 1, 3, 7 and 9. And this is defined as the multiple of group of Zn modulo n. Also, we define it as the Gallus field of n. So Z is integers up to n, and we take the modulo n. So if we want, we can actually have a little look at an example. Okay, so there's 10, 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. If we take 12, then we have 1, 5, 7, and 11. Okay, so this gives us our multiplicative group for Zn modulo n. So number theory, Zn basically means we have 0 up to n minus 1. Okay, so we don't have a value greater than, than n, sometimes called the Gallus field of n, and we're restricted up to the value of n. The Zn star that we have here is actually a subset of these numbers that we have here, but it's the multiplicative group of Zn modulo n. So as we've seen, then the value of n, the values in, in this subset will not share any factors with n. So if n is prime, then none of the values will actually match, will have factors that are equal to the prime number. So we end up with uh, a field which has all of the numbers up to n minus 1. So this is Z11 star. 11 is a prime number, so that will be the values there. We also define this as this, with this symbol here. But we're going to use this one here. So if we wanted to define uh, a value to be part of this group with a prime number or with a number, with an integer, so Z9 star, we'll get 1, 2, 4, 5, 7 and 8 because uh, the factors here are 3. So we don't have 3 in here and 6 includes a factor of 3. If we try Z of 91 star, that's 13 times 7 and we look and there's a 7 missing there, there's a 13. 26 is missing, 14 is missing, and so on. And then when we try it for a prime number, we can see that we have all of the numbers uh, up to n minus 1. So we'll just try that one. Uh, 
Okay, so there's 91, which is 13 times 7. So we can see that 7 is missing. And we'll try 97, which is a prime number. And we see here we get 96 values, which is all our values up to 96. So the code that we can use to to uh, determine these is just this here. The GCD is the greatest common uh, denominator between A and B. And it just finds out if there's a factor that's shared between A and B. And we just go through the numbers like this, determining if the, the greatest common denominator is 1. If it is, then we can include it in the series. What we have in discrete logarithms and with the Diffie-Hellman method is that we often have uh, an equation such as this y is equal to g to the power of x mod n. It's typically is a little g that we have here. And the property of this is that if n is a prime number it ends up being cyclic. So for all the values of x, we'll actually find it will go through a cycle. So we can try uh, that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, 6, if we pick 6 as our g value and n is equal to 7, then we should find that it's cyclic for the values of x. And if we just keep going on and on from there. Okay, so that's a, a cyclic result that, that we get. And it always happens when we have a prime number. But something magical happens Sometimes when we select a number and it becomes part of a cyclic group. With a cyclic group, we end up that we get a unique value on the output for different values of x when we use a g value and a prime number. And it will go on a sequence and output all the possible values up to n minus 1. And then it will actually repeat. So we can see here 2, 8, 10, 7, 6, 4, 5, 9, 3. That includes all the values that are possible. Then it goes back to 2, 4, and so on. So this becomes a cyclic group G of an order N with a generator G. So we'll just try that one. So we'll try with a GVI of 2, and we'll try 1, and a prime number of 11, 2, 4, 8, 5, and so on. Then if we go up to 11, it will start to repeat. 12, goes back to the 4 again. 13 and so on. So we end up and where we cycle round. So before we saw just with a prime number it would be cyclic but it didn't cover all the values uh, that were possible within the group but now it will will get a unique output for all the values of x up to n minus 1 and then it will repeat round and it basically wraps round. This is defined by this symbol here. And we can have a look at this. And this is where we can pick the values of G, which will actually produce the cyclic group. So there's 11. So 11 can be 2, 6, 7, and 8. We picked 2, so that worked. But when we picked 7, well, there isn't any for 7. There's 11 again, 13. 2 is often used and is a very typical value, but here you can see for 17 we need to pick a value of 3, for 23 we pick a value of 5, and so on. So when we pick a prime number for this, 
We then go and find out all the possible G values which will actually work to produce the cycle, cyclic group. So where there's an example of this uh, is with uh, the Diffie-Hammond method. With this particular G value, we raise it to the power of A, which is a random value from Alice, and Bob raises uh, the power of G, which we agree on, to the power of B, and we take mod P. So all the operations are done with respect to mod P, which is the prime number. If we pick a value of G, then we can see that we end up getting this uh, cyclic group, and it should work. Okay, so for the Diffie-Hellman method, what we do is we pick a prime number that we're going to work with, and then we'll, we'll pick a value of G. As I said, G is typically 2 or 3, or a fairly low value like that. Okay, thanks. So that's outlined the multiplicative group of said n modulo n.